Gosh, holy cow. Oh my gosh, right at the stinking bank. Whoa, 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 whoa. In the bluest water imaginable. Holy cow. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America, from California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I have generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name's Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. Well, what's going on folks? So welcome back to 100 Ponds. My goal in this series is to help you guys become better bass anglers by showing you a hundred different ponds and how I catch bass in each one of them. Now, every pond that I fish is brand new, never been there before. And my intent in fishing brand new bodies of water is that I wanna show you guys on camera the thought process of how to break down a new pond every single time I go out on the water. Some of those ponds I find myself on Google Earth and others like the one you're gonna to see today, a subscriber told me about, and I almost didn't believe him when he said, there were bass in this pond because it has the bluest water I've ever seen. So before I even got the cameras out, I had to make a cast and this happened on my first cast. There's no way a bass lives in this pond. No way. Okay, holy cow. Holy cow, there is a way. There is a way. Whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. A nice one too. Holy moly. That's gorgeous. What the heck? In the bluest water imaginable. Holy cow, let's get the rest of my stuff. But enough chit chat and let's get down to the pond that I'm so excited to show you guys and catch fish on this exact lure right here. This is pond number 74. Well, now that I've confirmed that this guy was not lying, there are bass in this place, I'm gonna rig up some lures that I think would make a whole lot of sense for a pond like this. The vibrating jig, of course, can stay on, but I'm also gonna rig up a little belly weighted swim bait. Good thing is my Evolution tackle bag here has everything in it that I could need for a pond adventure. And I'm gonna go with kind of a smaller swim bait, not because I think that I have to go small to catch fish, but because I wanna be extra weedless. I want this thing to slip in and out of the snot grass that's probably down there on the bottom and be a nice enticing snack for any size bass in this pond. Ah. That hook's too big. And I don't think I have a smaller one. Well, this one is just a little bit smaller. There we go. Look at that little Colorado blade action. Beautiful. I'm gonna take off this little crankbait here that catches them so well in dirtier water during the springtime and tie up this little mamma jamma. I'm gonna leave this in the truck. Although I should probably bring at least one of these with me in my pocket. And it looks like somebody left their bottle of Miracle Whip out here. Maybe I'll catch me a Miracle Giant. And I'm serious, I cannot believe there are bass living in this pond. I don't even see any forage species. We always talk about conditions in this series. Of course, too blue of water, it is fake blue. But even though it is fake blue, it's not really that clear. Like I can't see in the water, even with polarized sunglasses on, I can't see that far in the water column. As far as like cover and structure and grass, I don't see anything. Maybe a few like random rocks like this one as they built the pond that are kind of scattered on the bottom. but. Really, there's nothing. I just had to come try this out. Turns out the guy wasn't lying. There are fish here and we're gonna catch them, y'all. Man, it is deep out there in the middle. It's like eight, nine feet in the middle, which for a pond of this size is pretty deep. And just like every pond that has almost no structure or cover or contour lines, you really just have to make fan casts around the entire pond, covering water effectively as you walk from spot to spot. There's not really any rhyme or reason why fish are where they are. You just kind of have to fish it all. With how quickly I caught one when I first got here, I'm honestly surprised I haven't got one since. I guess bass can live in this kind of weird environment, but maybe not many of them. Again, I'm not seeing any forage species. All right, well, we tried. Gosh, holy cow. Oh my gosh, right at the stinking bank. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I was about to give up on this pond. Get in here, get in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Dang, three pounder. Absolutely choked. I mean, he was not coming off. Even though the bite was not very strong and it was right at the bank. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Has something coming out of his, his booty hole. I think it's a hook. Yeah, he's passing a hook right now. But that is, that is nuts. That this quality of bass can live in this kind of water. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I guess this flies in the face of all the uh, people that tell you all these chemicals kill fish. Well, maybe some of them. These chemicals obviously grow some megas. He literally ate right here. Let me reenact that. I'm reeling in, giving up on my cast, and it eats it right there. Crazy. And in all seriousness, there is no rhyme or reason that I can tell for why a fish would be right there, other than the fact that he probably just swam by, saw my lure, and ate it. I don't think that fish lives there. I don't think there's any strategic reason why the fish is sitting there. It just was. And that's kind of how all ponds like this are. You just got to fish around the whole thing slowly, and eventually you hopefully get a bite. I was literally thinking like, dang, I caught one at the beginning, went around this whole edge here, didn't catch one. I'm probably not going to put this, this pond on video. Well, guess what? They're in here. I just had to be patient. Now that's two fish on the bluegill thunder cricket and zero on the swim bait. So I'm going to keep throwing the swim bait a little bit, but I think the thunder cricket, despite it being really weird watercolor, is, uh, is the lure that's getting it done today. Although the second that I say something like, ah, this lure is not going to catch him, I'll probably get a bite. Now, one thing that could be the reason for the vibrating jigs success in this pond over the swim bait is because of the gold blade that this bluegill version of the tungsten thunder cricket has. So maybe in the super bright sunny conditions in the blue water, these fish need something you know flashy in their face and that's what's triggering the bite. I'd like to see the difference between this and like a silver blade or a black blade on uh, bite percentage. Either way, catching fish on a pond that uh, I never would have stopped at if someone hadn't told me. So I'm really glad they did. Definitely can't judge a pond by its cover, which I have the habit of doing way too often. Come on. Got him, got him, yes sir, yes sir. Oh my gosh, I saw one cruising up shallow threw my thunder cricket by him and he smoked it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How stinking cool. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm confused how fish of this quality are surviving when I don't see any forage. Like, what are they eating? I mean, I'm not gonna complain. This is awesome, but like, what the heck? And I'm gonna walk over here and see if this was a bed because no, there's not even a bed here. So it is bedding season, but that fish was just up shallow you know, rooting around, looking for something to eat. And once again, polarized sunglasses got me that fish. I talk about it so much in this whole series, especially springtime, summertime, fall. There can be fish shallow, either just cruising or making a bed. And if you don't have a good pair of polarized sunglasses, you are physically handicapping yourself. So I use Amphibia Eye Gear. I've worn them for about six years now, finally partnered up with the company. And you can use code, I believe it's TRF, 20? Whatever the code is, it'll be here on the screen. I would greatly appreciate it. And so would the company, if y'all would check them out. They are awesome sunglasses because they float. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, they float. Now I gotta dry them out. And I can't tell you how many times I've lost my sunglasses in the lake over my, you know, 15 years of bass fishing. So if you have a habit of losing yours or your kids throw them in the water, check out Amphibia Eye Gear, you're gonna love them. And I'll tell you what I'm loving, this pond. I'm gonna start going the opposite way, making some casting angles that I didn't make going uh, that direction. Now, one thing I am able to do with a lure like this, and you can do it with a crankbait, you can even do it with a slower moving lure, like a Texas rig or a jig, is I'm actually able to feel there is some kind of a contour line down there, but I'm not sure if that's what the bass are actually sitting on. But as I cast out there in deep water, I let it sink to about 10 feet, and then I start my retrieve off, you know, right off the bottom. I feel nothing, feel nothing, feel nothing. And then right about there, probably 25 feet out from the bank, I feel my vibrating jig starting to hit the bottom and it kind of climbs its way up. And so by doing that, I can tell at least on this area, that's where the drop off is. And as I move over here, I can repeat the same process. So cast it out there, let it sink. Man, probably about eight feet, start my retrieve. It is constant depth out there and then right there. I feel my lure start to rise up 
the uh, up the ridge because of course no pond goes straight down and straight across there's some kind of slope and so the more you understand that the more you'll be able to find where fish are actually sitting a whole lot faster and you'll understand your body of water even better so you don't need a map you don't need a fish finder or sonar or live scope you can actually do this both on ponds and on lakes with certain lures now a drop shot harder Weightless soft plastic, harder. Top water, impossible. But especially heavier moving lures that maintain contact with the bottom, like crankbaits, vibrating jigs, those kind of things, they can help you understand what the contours of your pond actually look like. You just have to be paying attention. You know what though, I'm really curious about what this chemical actually is. And so I'm gonna give my fisheries biologist friend, Stephen Barden, a call. His profession is actually managing private bodies of water. I wanna hear what he has to say. You reach Stephen Barden. Nah, no answer. We'll let y'all know if he calls back. Gosh, gosh, I just got hit on, on the way to the bottom. I felt my line go duh, 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 duh. But you know what? That kind of a bite felt very bluegillish. So maybe that's why my bluegill colored thunder cricket is catching them. Because a bass rarely bites like that. A bass is like a thonk. That was a sissy bite. Gosh, no way. Another shallow one, another shallow one. I literally thought in my head, I wonder if there's more fish cruising the bank. And there are. Get in here, yes sir. Oh my gosh, that is so stinking cool. I mean like not a giant, but just the genetics in here are gorgeous. Wow, that was so cool. I did not even see that fish. I just assumed if one was cruising shallow over there, there might be one cruising the bank over here. So as I continue to work around the pond, I'm definitely gonna make my first cast at each spot I stop on the, uh, the edge of the wall. This gets me so excited. This is awesome. Aha, I found the forage. They are right here and they are teeny tiny. Let me get my phone. That is what they are eating. The tiniest bluegills possible. Look at those things. Which honestly, if I'm gonna look at my presentation here, it's not that far off. Yeah, I mean, it's twice the size, but it's the right color. And they must be eating a lot of those things if they're gonna get that big and healthy. Now, can a pond of this size and bait fish of that size support a huge bass population? No, they can't. But maybe the uh, chemical in the water offsets whatever the water quality issues usually are with clear ponds. Gosh, I want Steven to call me back. I'm so curious. Uh-oh, I see something. So I gotta check this out. It looks like somebody has been fishing in here. Oh no. And they lost themselves a little pre-rigged swim bait. I'm gonna pick the line out of here. Wow, holy cow. Where does this go? How do you lose this much line on the bank? I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here on this rock and I'll come back to get that before I leave. You know, as the Boy Scouts say, do a good turn daily. I kind of wonder if I'm catching like every bass that can bite in this place. Because every bass that I've seen with my eyes, I've landed. And so I feel like these fish in here are just really, really dumb, which means if my lure goes past them, they're gonna eat it. So if I haven't caught one on a certain stretch, it's probably not because the fish is there and didn't want to eat. It's probably because there's no fish there, which is such a weird situation because most of the time you really have to fool a bass to get them to eat. But I think my subscriber friend here has really discovered a, a hidden gem in his apartment complex. Gosh, there's one. Oh, he popped off. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Man. Ah. I don't think I did anything wrong there. I just don't think that fish had a, had a good grip on the lure. Man, that felt like a big one. The way it pulled back felt different than the rest of the fish in here. Man, there is not that many fish in this pond either. So I think I just, uh, I just blew a pretty good opportunity. Shoot. Well, you know what they say, can't win them all. I definitely want to come back here with a, uh, a glide bait though at some point catch one on a big swim bait. I feel like these type of fish here, the, the unpressured, slightly less educated fish are the ones that I wanna target for the, uh, the glide type stuff. Now, does the glide bait look anything like what they're eating? Absolutely not. But uh, I think if they've never seen anything like it and they're curious, they're gonna put their mouth on it. But I mean, look at this, look at the water. Y'all can finally see really how blue it is. My goodness. I feel like the blue man group totally uh, took a whiz in this pond 
and that's what happened. And if you don't know the Blue Man Group and you're watching this video, you are young. I guess eventually we all live to see ourselves become the old guy. Is that another bass? It is. Why didn't that one eat? Why didn't that fish eat? Unless that's the fish, oh! That's the fish that I caught earlier and it is on a bed. I just couldn't see a bed. Yeah, that's 100% a bed fish. I just don't know where where the bed is. Cause it's not like he sweeped away the bottom. I mean, like I see like a white area here, but it's not really swept away. It's just where the sun's hitting the hardest. So that answers the question that I had in my head this whole time and is are these bass sterile? Has the chemicals, have the chemicals made them so they don't spawn? The answer to that is no. And I guess these bass don't have bloody tails because there's, there's no like rocks to sweep away. It's just mud. Well, my third lap around this pond has not resulted in a fish. So if I was, oh my, oh no, no, not the, not the rope. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I don't know if I'm getting this one back. Shoot, dang it. Oh, I got it back, let's go. As I was saying, my third lap around this pond has not resulted in a fish. So I think my next move would be to grab a wacky worm or a weightless soft plastic jerk bait, the caffeine shad and make one more loop around this thing, really focusing on that area kind of beyond where my eyes can see, unless I see a fish cruising up shallow, but I think all the, the shallow cruisers have probably been caught by this point. Now, am I gonna head to the truck and, oh, hold up, gotta go back, get my trash. Now, am I gonna go back to the truck and rig up that wacky worm? I'm not, I got places to be. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that was an interesting experience, a lot of fun, but interesting. And you know what, before we put the rods away, I'm gonna call Steven one more time, see if he answers. He's probably doing his job, it's a work day. Hey Tyler. Hey, hey, sorry to keep bothering you. Oh, you're right. I'm, hey, I'm filming right now, and okay. I'm fishing a pond that has the bluest water I've ever seen. It's gotta be chemicals. Yeah, it's dyed blue. It's dyed blue, but I thought that kind of dye killed the fish. Are there certain that are non-toxic to bass? None of them are toxic to bass. Oh, none of them are. No, they shade the water column, but they prevent algae from growing. So the longer it's blue, the worse quality the fish will be, because there's no food chain for them. So the plankton can't grow, which means it can't feed redfin or bluegill or juvenile bass, so they're all going to stunt. Interesting. Have several consecutive years where you see one like that. If it's the first couple of years they did it, it's going to have very little vegetation and be fun to fish. And then after a couple of years, it's going to get super tough because the fish are going to be stunted. Interesting because yeah, they it was a lot, but they just won't be big. Okay, got it. I, I was figuring that was gonna be the case because the fish were quality and they were dumb. But you're saying yeah. after a few more years there won't be many left. Uh, well there's just no food chain for them, so they're not growing. Okay. And so once they age out, then yeah, they're not being replaced. Well that is interesting. So you're saying this pond, at least as far as the uh, the fish size go, they're not gonna get much bigger really. That's exactly right. Aesthetically it's very pretty. It's easy to fish. There's not a lot of stuff to get hung up. It doesn't grow algae, but you're not going to have a long term fishery because of it. Wow. Okay. Good to know. I appreciate it. Yep. That's Palm Fishing 101, buddy. You need to know that. I know it is. I'll see ya. <laughs> Bye. That was cool. Just realized I wasn't running this camera for audio, so I'm not sure how much of that y'all heard, but I talked to Steven and he said that that kind of water quality looks cool, it looks pretty, it's fun to fish, but because they they dye the water column, it cannot, the sunlight can't penetrate and it cannot grow any algae. That's why there was hardly any snot grass. That's why there was no vegetation. So it's a fun place to fish, but he said that creates a totally stunted environment. There's only so many bluegill they can eat and the ones they can eat are small. And so they're not gonna really grow to any larger size. So this pond here, I might return to it later on this year, but a few years down the road, it's probably not gonna be any good. Everything's gonna be the same exact size. And at the end of the call, he said, Tyler, that's Pond Fishing 101. You should know that. I gotta spend more time with Steven because he's teaching me things I didn't know. So if you've got a pond that is like that, just know it may be fun fishing, but it probably won't last long. So if you're on the, the board of your HOA and they wanna get the water blue, it'll look pretty, but fishing won't be good for much longer. Tripod back in the truck, and that's where we're gonna end this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you wanna see my last 100 Ponds episode, Episode, I will leave it up here in the corner. My name's Tyler. As always, it's a pleasure, and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF. And I also dropped some brand new hats on my merch store called Infinite Outdoors. They're awesome. Uh, I'll have them linked below. See ya.